I'll be talking about using Uno in JavaScript with a LibreOffice Libre WebAssembly in browser LibreOffice. Okay, kind of weird, went weird with the title there. So basically what I mean there is, there is LibreOffice WebAssembly, which is this Allotropia-led initiative, um, which ports LibreOffice to the web, but it's not like um, the one, you know, uh, the LibreOffice Online, Collabor Online type of way. This one is natively client-sided running in the browser. Um, right now, um, it runs natively in all modern web browsers. It uses Wasm, which is WebAssembly, and to make that happen, there is a tool chain called mscripten. And mscripten is basically a C++ to Wasm tool chain with all of its bells and whistles. And right now, LibreOffice WebAssembly utilize, utilizes the um, Qt UI on the web to make it happen. Um, there were lots of talks about it previously from various people. Um, so I'm not going into much detail there. This is just a recap. Um, this talk is about um, giving LibreOffice WebAssembly an interface, uh, a direct interface in the browser with JavaScript. And this kind of as a prototype right now um, working. And um, to make uh, making this happen um, in the end should enable us to do many new things where like um, for starters, just like you can do macros in basic, you could do that in a JavaScript console in the browser next to the LibreOffice WebAssembly. And uh, also, like for instance, right now, LibreOffice WebAssembly is using the Qt UI to uh, display stuff altogether. You could um, tie the um, JavaScript, some JavaScript-based UI framework uh, to all of these you know goodness and make your own app that actually utilizes LibreOffice. It could be LibreOffice's own UI too, just that it's now shiny and uses React or some kind of other nice thing that works nicely on the web. Maybe you can put it in the grids, uh, kind of resizes nicely. So lots of things to gain there. Other than that, of course, you can take LibreOffice WebAssembly as some kind of in a headless state or partially rendering stuff state and do your own app that is uh, built with JavaScript, call, making it all of its code with JavaScript and natively runs on the web. It could do a conversion of um, various file types. It could extract, extract lots of different data. You could give people, I don't know, JavaScript forms and when they interact with those forms, it real time uh, appears with all of LibreOffice's goodness. Like, um, so people use the forms as uh, they are uh, already accustomed to uh, through a browser with just a few fields and they get immediate preview. Or you could do some PDF editor. I don't know, I'm just rambling about here. And Likely you have some ideas yourself too, when you have LibreOffice on the web that you can do anything with. Um, so before actually going about how did this actually exactly happen, I want to show you uh, that it works kind of to whet your appetite about it and uh, also show even though it's quirks like is quite, even though it has its 
quirks right now. It is usable. Okay, I can see nothing, but so I'll just copy some lines over here and talk through them. Okay, this is some scary looking JavaScript <laughs> interface uh, to the LibreOffice WebAssembly here. On the left you can see uh, LibreOffice WebAssembly there in the browser and I have the just JavaScript console on the right. Let me actually zoom out a bit. Um, at the start, um, this is kind of a hack uh, because not all of the interfaces are bound yet. Um, to get stuff rolling, this is a custom function, get current model from view shell, and it just gives us the current model, then we can do anything we want with it. We are getting the model, and then we are, um, as if we are doing it on using C++, um, doing a Uno query, or you know, query. Here is quite mod full, but essentially what's going on is we are creating a text document ref, which is a reference to text document from C++, and we are just call, making a unit call to it. So we are getting the text document, then we are getting the text from it. Right now there is uh, some limitations of the implementation. This hopefully soon be gone, that we have to actually query everything, like we can't uh, get uh, from derived classes, ex have ex derived classes right now, can't really access to its base classes functions directly, so we need to do some additional Uno queries just to make it happen. Uh, so from text we are getting simple text, and then creating a Text cursor, text cursor from the, that simple text, creating a text range from it, and finally setting some string there. So I have randomly typed our string here, and if you look on the left, hopefully what's going to happen when I run this is, before what is LibreOffice, there will be string here. And that didn't happen. Um, likely I wasn't able to copy it nicely. There is something there. Uncode syntax and of input. Okay. Hmm. Can anyone see anything? Let me just get rid of these. Those shouldn't need it. Is there something open that doesn't close? Oh, okay. So there are no new lines here, right? Let me try that again. Okay, I'll just press up a couple of times. I tried this many times. This should be there. You should have a working one. Or I can just show you another example <laughs> because I found this one while going up. Sorry about that. And this one does a similar thing, uh, goes through a while loop, gets all of the paragra paragraphs, and assigns a random character color to each of them. It's kind of more fun than that. So on the left, you can see all of the paragraphs changing colors. I don't know what syntax error there for the first time, but I can't really see the screen. Sorry about that. So it's basically lets you use Uno commands, the interfaces from JavaScript in a quite hefty way. Like it's not really nice yet. So let me check the time. Mm. So how did this happen? Um, there were multiple um, pathways that could have been taken um, for binding C++ with JavaScript using mscript and toolchain. And embind or mbind comes with this toolchain, so that was the natural way to go. 
but also whereby DL is a kind of uh, inter interface definition language um, that does stuff more simply. And uh, after looking at these, what I have realized myself was that by DL implementations actually use mbind uh, in the end. Under under them also web IDL doesn't support lots of stuff like uh, stuff like exceptions like we need. And so that was out of the way. Nbind was a nice option, and uh, because it gave us TypeScript bindings. But uh, now embind or mbind. <laughs> They sound so similar, sorry about that. Mbind actually gives us type secret bindings itself too in its new version, so we went with Mbind. And uh, Mbind kind of gives us a boost Python like bind semantics. It's relatively popular, so it's maintained and it lets us do lots of advanced um, stuff uh, with our bindings, so it was a nice choice. Also, I haven't really tested this performance myself or any other options because there are, uh, it wasn't really trivial for me. But uh, according to their documents, uh, the call, over, call overhead for simple functions has been measured at about 200 nanoseconds. Um, Mbind actually comes with its own built-in type conversions for trivial stuff from C++. So void is undefined, and bool is bool becomes true or false from char uh, to double. Everything is a number, and uh, it also supports different string types itself too. And how does the M bind bindings actually work? And so this is a real simple example of how can we bind a C++ function to JavaScript. Um, basically, this linear uh, lerp function here uh, takes in three floats and returns a float. To bind it, all we have to do is use this mscript and bindings, give our module a name, and name the function in quotes. This becomes the JavaScript's uh, call to it, and then we give the reference to Lerp. Then on JavaScript we can just do a module dot Lerp with some parameters, since mbind itself handles all types of floats, it is done. And if we go a bit further, mbind also lets us uh, do some classes where we can also create derived classes. But one thing to note here is we can't really do uh, double derived, I mean diamond style derived classes or um, multiply derived, that's the word. <laughs> multiply derived classes are not permitted. Um, there are actually types, uh, ways to implement this in JavaScript, but they in at mbind they chose not to. So this is kind of a problem for us because we, in Uno there are lots of uh, things that are multiply derived. Uh, I'm kind of hopping over, trying to get in the time. So what do we do with the ideal bindings to make them actually appear in JavaScript? I will, instead of talking over ideal, I will directly go to HDL because what we are doing with EMBind is we are get, taking the C++ uh, interface and just translating it into JavaScript simply. And uh, so directly looking at the uh, HDL there. And let's just focus on get text for now so that it's not as much on the screen. And you can see that get text takes no parameter, and x text range appears to uh, derive from x interface. And how do we bind this? At first, we do a class. We give the x text range there the whole name. We kind of do this with dollar signs, comp signs, star things, so that there are no name clashes. Hopefully that will not be there soon in the future. 
uh, and then we bind the method and just like we see with lerp we just say dot function name it and give it the reference and additionally we don't really use uh, uno interfaces without wrapping them in references normally so we need to handle that too uh, to handle that what we do is we create a template specialization of that reference and we bind that, we name that the same name as Comsan star, blah, blah, text range, but this time just add a ref at the end so that it's a, we know that it's a reference. And we, get, we can give some specialized constructors there so that we can use Uno query to get that. And to bind the function there, we use a lambda that actually uh, reaches uh, inside uh, the reference and calls the function itself. We have to give m bind to all of our pointers for this to correctly work. And moving on uh, to make all of these actually work and be accessible uh, to be converted to each other to make Uno reference queries work, we have to do some primary bound bindings um, the, that is kind of prerequisite for the all the other ones and we need to some of them just needs a name because uh, we need to know that if something's derived from them we can uh, handle them the same way like base reference we don't actually do any implementation inside it we just say that there is a client class called base reference. You should know that we will call it base reference. And for, for Uno query uh, specialization, in the uh, we use usually enums to just uh, uh, specify the type of query we are doing. We need to kind of do that using this enum underscore thing. And uh, for anys which we use for setting lots of parameters or uh, handling lots of return types. We need to do lots of uh, different handling stuff inside which I redacted here. But we basically can get a JavaScript uh, object inside and depending on the given type class, we can try to cast it to that and put it inside an any. This is kind of a um, special constructor that's kind of hacked there. And this kind of makes it work. And uh, also, for stuff like OU string, we do some constructors and hopefully so soon sequences and stuff too. And uh, our interface definition language has in out and in out uh, parameters, which means they could change for these. Um, in mind, actually, doesn't uh, really support references into the functions that can change. So we kind of do a hack here. Sorry about that. Uh, we kind of do a hack here that we just uh, just wrap it in a lambda. We just take in uh, their pointers instead of references. Uh, mbind is okay with raw pointers because it wants stuff to be explicit there, and we can just pass it inside with the wrapper function, there's kind of a work around that. That happens to be used for web ideas references too. So, um, the, the current state is implemented like this. What's the future plans or ideas? What will uh, this interface will be in the future? Um, so right now, even though there was an effort, on exceptions don't really work because uh, or Uno, Uno exceptions don't uh, are not really dynamic, so there is a way to catch exceptions from Wasm, but it directly gives you a pointer. And since we, uh, our Uno exceptions are not polymorphic, they are not they don't have any attached runtime runtime type information, and we can't really get that from that. But Turns out uh, on the newer versions of EM bind that we are not using yet, um, there's this possibility to uh, use this recently in, introduced WebAssembly features 
called a tag, and we can use this get a CPP exception tag, CPP exception Tron value, and get exception message. We can utilize those to actually handle these. I'm not entirely sure how does tag work, but uh, as far as I know, it appears to be a new um, section in the WASM binary that defines not only exceptions, but special kinds of stuff that kind of coincide with some types. Um, so moving on, what could we do? All of these nasty, any uh, conversions that I've shown you, and uh, likewise, all OU string needed its own constructor. Hopefully, all of them could be removed by using this uh, specialized template spe specializations inside uh, internal MC script and namespace. We can do some custom marshalling there and make our types convert to and from JavaScript to C++ on the fly just seamlessly. And if you don't want that, we can also do the other way. We can also make it not uh, do, do, any, do any custom marshalling there. And also TypeScript bindings, I kind of mentioned this at the start, but starting from version 3.144, there are uh, TypeScript binding generations for uh, mbind, and we are kind of using an older version of mscript, and so we don't really have that. And as far as I, as far as I remember, Balai said it's kind of trivial to actually uh, bump up to 3.1. So that's good news. Hopefully, we will have some type secret, type secret bindings there. So we don't need to do lots of gross JavaScript not knowing types business. And lastly, um, we need to make the API more JavaScript-ish. Right now, it looks like some kind of uh, C++ interface directly just being called in JavaScript, and it is just that. Hopefully, uh, just with more um, attitude and more opinionated views, we can just make that happen, and we can make this look like JavaScript, act like JavaScript, and do stuff as intended, just needs some work. To do that, we can use custom marshalling, get rid of those cross namings, use TypeScript, and generally don't give uh, anything an exposed non-reference stuff. Like just wrap everything in a reference. So that's about it from me. Uh, if you have any questions, yeah, I guess no time. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you.